Hey, welcome back to Guitar Discoveries. I'm on a mission to help you play guitar, sing, record, and sound great doing it. Now today we're going to go back to a legendary travel guitar called the Backpacker. The controversial C.F. Martin Backpacker. Now here's mine. This is one of the earliest models from around 1992. And this one's so early, in fact, it doesn't have the Martin identity anywhere but on the label. So here's what it sounds like in standard tuning. And here's how it sounds in high strung Nashville tuning. So what do you think? Do you hate the sound of the Martin Backpacker? Some of my viewers do. I've gotten more hater comments about this guitar than any other instrument I've shared. Ward's Cleaver said, WTF, hilarious. It sounds like two tiny three string guitars. Chief Kurt said, if only you had a guitar with some actual tonal properties for your demonstration, like the Yamaha behind you. And Corn Bob Rimlove said, that backpacker sounds like a banjo though, yuck. So are they right? Well, stick around to listen, learn, and decide for yourself if the Martin Backpacker is worthy of your love or your hate. Okay, so obviously this looks nothing like any other Martin guitar. And a lot of people think it's not even worthy of the Martin name. So how and why did Martin even start making these unique little backpackers? Well, the original version was designed by an independent luthier named Robert McAnally. And his goal was just to build a very portable, inexpensive acoustic guitar, but to construct it using high quality woods. So McAnally took inspiration from ancient Greek harp-like instruments called psalteries. Some psalteries had a triangular shape and they were usually played wide end up and then McAnally just flipped it around. Okay, so it's 1992 and Chris Martin, CEO of Martin Guitars, is wandering around the Philadelphia Folk Festival. He passes McAnally's booth, sees the original backpacker, and it stops him dead in his tracks. I mean, I wish I could have heard their conversation because things happened Fast after that, just a few months later, at the 1993 NAMM show, Martin displayed a slightly modified backpacker at their booth, and they took 5,000 orders for it at the show. That has got to be a record. I mean, maybe the greatest launch of a new guitar in history, at least in unit volume. So why did the humble backpacker take off like that? Now, personally, I'd guess it it was because it was eye-catching, right? Obviously extremely portable and well-named, and also because of the very low price. It was certainly the first Martin guitar that you could buy for under 200 bucks. And I was like Chris Martin. I fell for it the minute I saw it. The first 10 years of backpackers had a neck and sides made from a single piece of mahogany. See how that's all continuous right there. That was a really smart touch of craftsmanship because it eliminated the need for a neck joint. 10 years later, 2002, Martin started making a new and improved model and it had a slightly wider body, a little bit longer scale. It had a larger sound hole, had a 15 fret neck joint. Uh, and the more typical Martin-shaped headstock. Now they claim the sound is more balanced, but to my ear, there's really not much of a difference. So from 1993 to today, it's a little less than 30 years, the backpacker has actually built up some serious street cred and some claims to fame. It's the world's most popular travel guitar. It was the first guitar taken into space, the first guitar taken to the top of Mount Everest, and in my own life, it's been both a companion and a survivor because it traveled around in the trunk of my car for years. I mean, <laughs> all kinds of weather, heat, cold. I've taken it camping, hiking. It, but the, here's the thing. The coolest, most surprising thing of all is that its unique sound earned its way onto lots of my studio recordings. No other instrument sounds quite like a backpacker. 
for the first 25 years, I played it in standard tuning using the recommended extra light gauge strings. And now I leave it in high strung Nashville tuning. And I gotta say, I like it even more. Now I should say, I love the sound of almost any instrument, often the weirder the better for me. Because, you know, when you've heard the same premium Martins, Fenders, Gibsons on the majority of records for the past 50 years, uniqueness is a virtue. Unfamiliar sounds and tones are a great way to wake up listeners and just deliver something new to their ears. Well, that's one of the reasons I posted lots of videos about unique, odd, unusual guitars and amps. For me, it's all for the love of texture. You know, in my opinion, no mic or instrument sounds good or bad, just better or worse in context. Now, as far as the strange tone of my backpacker goes, it's actually a favorite of mine. And I'm always impressed when it's the perfect sonic spice that I can put in when I'm layering guitars. So check it out. Sex was holy and war was obscene, and it wasn't twisted. What a wonderful dream! Living for love, unafraid of the end. I mean, obviously, I'm a fan, and I've become a bigger and bigger fan over the years. So, what are the big complaints? Why so much hate about the backpacker? Well, because the body shape is like this, the backpacker has little to no bass. So it generally sounds more like a banjo or a dulcimer than a guitar. So if you hate the sound of banjo, you probably don't like the backpacker either. Another complaint from players is the heavy weight of the neck relative to the body. See, it has a ton of neck dive. So it's hard to hold and play in your lap without a strap. Now it's never bothered me too much because I don't really think of the backpacker as a standard guitar. It's a different sounding instrument, the same way a lap steel or a uke or a banjo sound and play differently. So I don't mind having to play the backpacker a little differently. Now if you like the unique sound and the shape is your main complaint, I recently made a discovery that is Pretty cool news. A small company named Craft Boy came up with a clever $29 fix for this issue of the odd shape and how it doesn't sit well in your lap. So I ordered one and here it is. <laughs> this is the Compadre Travel Guitar Stabilizer. Very simple, lightweight device, attaches to your backpacker with the built-in bungee cords. So I've attached mine. You can see it's attached on the back. It attaches to the bottom and then the upper uh, strap button. So mine being the old body style, I had to make one little modification. I had to move the strap button from here over to here to make the bungee hold properly. So that was a little bit of a surprise for me, but now that I did it, it works fine. I'm gonna hold this up so you can see here. You can see how I moved the strap button. The bungee's coming around the side of the guitar now, works or side of the neck works perfectly. And then there's what the compadre looks like. So you can see, you know, if my knee were up here, it creates more of a standard guitar shape. And, uh, you know, it's a cool little way of making this guitar more ergonomic. Suddenly, if I took this off, I can play the backpacker in my lap. It's even pretty comfortable. And it's got this extra loop that you can use to hang up to store the guitar if you really want to. Now here's the thing. The compadre weighs six ounces. So it's almost like it's not even there. And it fits right in the carry bag. Just a cool little accessory that overcomes, you know, one of the major issues making players scorn the backpacker. 
to lick a real guitar. So that's it, the Martin Backpacker. You know, one of the most unique and controversial mainstream guitars from a storied manufacturer. And the Compadre, this simple $29 add-on that makes the Backpacker just a little bit more ergonomic to play with or without a strap. All right, what do you think? Do you love it or hate it? Please tell me in the comments. While you're at it, take just a second to like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when new videos come out. So keep on discovering, hating, loving, whatever, and see you next time.